Okay, so what value did you see? On my monitor, I saw something that looked roughly like an 8 or a 9 on an absolute value scale. But when I read text on a white background, it looks a lot blacker to me. This brings up our next term, contrast. In this example, contrast is the jump in value between the text and the white background. But contrast can also refer to the range of a value gradient map. On my monitor, black in absolute terms is, say, roughly an 8 or a 9, but in a va the value gradient map, it is a 10. In the example of the text on the white background, you're placing a value of 10 next to a value of 0. The end result is something that looks blacker than the value 10 itself. Now, all these numbers are confusing me, so what it boils down to is that contrast is a form of optical illusion. Here's another example. Take a look at this step value scale. Look closely at each square of the step. You might be able to notice that the right side of each square looks a little darker than the left side, even though the entire square is all the same value. Pause the video now if you need a little more time to look. This doesn't make any sense. What is going on here? The everyday optical illusion of contrast is is like a double-edged sword. If you can control it, it'll give your drawings a, a pop and an extra liveliness. But at the same time, while working on a drawing, it can cause confusion like misjudged distances and funky looking forms. The trickery doesn't happen in your brain, so by understanding what it is and how it happens, the brain can actually begin to recognize and harness it in your drawings. Remember how I said that the retina is filled with millions of photoreceptors all bundled together? Well, these photoreceptors, they don't get along and they're constantly fighting. Like any other fighter, you know, they get tired and they get adrenaline rushes, but these guys are super fighters and they can fight billions and billions and billions of time every second. One of the results of all this fighting is called lateral inhibition. Lateral inhibition is what causes the optical illusion of contrast. Now, let's see if I can explain this without having to be too much of a boring science teacher. Imagine a garden filled with hundreds of wonderfully smelling flowering plants. This is kind of like the photoreceptors in our retina. Now, in this garden there's one spot where the sun always shines through. The lucky plants in this sunspot thrive and they produce more flowers and their roots spread out. As their roots spread out, the neighboring plants can't compete. They are inhibited. So they grow weaker and start to lose some of their flowers. The rest of the garden is doing okay. It's just the ones next to the sunspot that are hurting. Because the lucky plants in the sunspot have more flowers, they smell stronger. Now, if these plants are like photoreceptors, then our brain is like a nose. The strength of each plant's smell would tell the brain to see it as lighter or darker. Because the plants next to the sunspot are inhibited by the roots of their neighbors, they have the least smell. Therefore, the brain sees them as the darkest. Now, this is really hard to explain, and you have to see it for yourself. So, I'm going to show some lateral inhibition illusions, but I don't know how well they will work on video. So, over here, yeah, over here, I'm going to post a website with some higher quality images. And if you can't see the link over here, I will also post it at the end of this video. This first illusion is probably the most popular illustration of lateral inhibition, called the Hermann grid. If you look closely at the intersection of the white lines, you will notice what appear to be darker blobs. The intersection is inhibited because it has nowhere to spread its roots. The areas just outside of the intersection can lay roots into the black squares, so it puts off a stronger smell than the intersection itself, making it appear brighter and the intersection darker. By putting a little spin on the Hermann grid, we get a scintillating grid. Do you see the flashing black circles at the intersections as you move your eyes around? Go ahead, try to look at one, it will disappear and another one will pop up elsewhere. It's like that annoying whack-a-mole game. In this illusion, the part of the barbell on the left side looks darker than that on the right. 
if you look right in the middle, there's almost a line cutting it in half. Do you notice anything else on? The barbell is perfectly symmetrical. Okay, I'll make it easier. The two sides are no longer connected. On both sides, there are identically shaped perfect squares of the same value. Do they look exactly the same, or do they look like different shaped rectangles? The one on the left does have a lot darker look than the one on the right. This last illusion is really complex. It is called the cafe wall. Are the horizontal lines parallel? You probably also see some motion artifacts shifting from left to right. Everything is completely still, and yes, the horizontal lines are parallel. Okay, so there you have it. Value and contrast in a very, very complicated nutshell. You should be happy I didn't have you draw value scales over and over and over again. You'll also be happy to know that this is the last of the rambling episodes that have nothing to do with actual drawing itself. For those of you wondering how you'll ever be able to draw a face with all these optical illusions working against you, just wait a couple episodes. I have an easy, accurate measuring system that will help you overcome it. I look forward to seeing you soon.